See, she knows the moment the debate shifts from who the baby is and what abortion does to the baby, and is then instead discussed in terms of the individual circumstances of the pregnant woman, their cause advances. And so what that tells us is we need to not ignore the plight of the woman, we need to make the case of how abortion hurts women, but very much so we cannot ignore, but in fact we must make central the plight of the preborn child and the dignity of the very individual who is being targeted for abortion. Briarpatch Magazine is a pro-abortion magazine that recently discussed pro-life activism in our country and specifically cited some of the work that my organization has done on university campuses. And they say on-campus battles are the new front line of pro-choice activism in Canada. But with anti-choicers setting the terms for debate, how can pro-choice activists respond in a way that best advances women's struggles for reproductive autonomy. They go on to say, seems like the Canadian Center for Bioethical Reform's Genocide Awareness Project uh, are becoming increasingly common on university campuses across the country. A new generation, she says, of anti-choice groups is establishing a reputation for itself on Canadian campuses with increasingly visible tactics that many pro-choice activists call discriminatory, harassing, and hateful. And they're using those, those words to falsely describe this project in order to try to shut it down because they are threatened by the images. So if they are threatened by the images, all the more we need to make use of them. I would say the third reason why we should use images in the case that I want to make for graphic images is because of the fruits of using them specifically in the context of the pro-life movement. It is not sufficient to say they worked in other causes, therefore they'll work in our own. We need to test that. And as we have tested that for the past 10 years of my organization's existence, we have seen time and again people change their minds on abortion as a result of the pictures. I routinely speak in Catholic schools, and I spoke uh, in a Catholic school in Ontario a couple years ago, and after my presentation in, in the months following, the guidance counselor contacted me and said, Stephanie, I want you to know that the weeks following your presentation, two girls came to me pregnant and told me that they were going to carry their pregnancies to term. And he said, when I congratulated them on their pro-life convictions, I asked them what convicted them to carry through with their pregnancies, and both cited the presentations that you had given. And of course, in the context of that presentation is a video about abortion. I also did a debate a few years ago at Simon Fraser University, and I found out months later from one of the students who attended that a friend of hers was pregnant, fearing the reaction of her parents, she was going to have an abortion, and as a result of the debate and the images that she saw in that debate, she decided to carry her pregnancy to term. I'd like to play for you a brief video uh, of one of our summer interns, Amanda, sharing a story that she uh, came to tell the staff as a result of standing on the streets of Calgary with the graphic images. Thank you. 
changes, changing their minds. This is a picture of my colleague Francisco who oversees our street activism where we hold handheld signs. And he recently met a girl this, uh, about a year ago now in January at a party. He was pregnant and they got talking. And he, she said to him, what do you do? And so he began to describe his work for us. And she said, then I need to tell you something. And she began to explain that the August prior, so about a year and a half ago, she was pregnant and scheduled for an abortion. And it was a very rainy day as she was leaving work. She was walking from her workplace and she saw these pro-life young people standing in the rain with graphic images. She said the next day she left work, she saw them again. She promptly canceled her appointment and her baby Adrian was born this past spring. And so we know that the images have worked in other movements. They are something the abortion advocates do not want used. And they are something that we have seen directly changes minds. What I'd like to do now is briefly address some common objections that sometimes are raised even by pro-life people about the images. And sometimes people will say, well, what about our children? Aren't the images something that we don't want young children to see? And I would say, well, certainly we're not targeting young children with the images. We're targeting people who are old enough to have abortions. Because if they're old enough to have abortions, they're old enough to see abortions. And as we target that group, sometimes children will be present. But the exposure of the images to children is an effect of targeting those who are old enough to have abortions. I think we have to ask ourselves, are we consistent in our reaction to abortion imagery the way there is other imagery in society? Do we continually worry about children being exposed to the front cover of Time magazine uh, or other magazines that have graphic images that children will see if you take them to the grocery store and you're in the checkout line waiting to get uh, your food? We also have to consider if you were walking down the road with, let's say, a five-year-old, and as you come up to the corner, a three-year-old is being attacked in front of you. Would your first reaction be, how dare these individuals attacking the three-year-old expose my five-year-old to this? Or would your first reaction be, how dare they attack this three-year-old and run to intervene on the injustice? Now, it just so happens that those who are doing the killing happen to do it behind closed doors. But the reason they're able to continue is because it's behind closed doors. And as much as we need to be concerned about the feelings of born children, we need to be more concerned about the lives of pre-born children. Then there's the concern some people raise about uh, respect for the dead. Uh, and they will say that this image is not respectful to that pre-born child. What is not respectful to this pre-born child is that she was decapitated dismembered, and disemboweled by abortion. It is the act of abortion which disrespects her, not the image of abortion. In the same way, the Vatican on its website has an image of John Paul the Great being shot. It's not the image which disrespects John Paul the Great. It was the shooting of him which disrespected John Paul the Great. Even our Lord and Savior, as Jim mentioned, the crucifix, the, all the suffering that he went through, it's not the images we have of that which is disrespectful. It is the act of torture and crucifixion of God himself which is disrespectful. And we are commanded to bring what is in darkness into the light. And it is very important that we remember Satan takes what is good and he twists it. It is good to bring what is in darkness into light. And what is Satan doing? He is twisting that and leading people to believe it is wrong to bring what's in darkness into light. And we cannot fall prey to that kind of temptation because we have to ask who gets aided when the darkness, when what happens in darkness is kept there? Those who do the killing. Those who do the killing are aided when this is covered up. But those who realize it needs to end. Those children whose lives need to be preserved, they are held by the images being exposed. This is an image of a child uh, that is, it looks very beautiful, and many people would say we should use images like this, and we should, but this child is dead. And some people will say, well, we can't use this child because it's disrespectful to use the image of that dead child for a good end, such as ending abortion. Well, it's, if it's disrespectful to use that image, then it's disrespectful to use that image. But how many people 
people want to say it's wrong to use that image? Wouldn't we say it is a good thing to show this image to spare children from being killed? So if we can show that image, then we should show that one. Finally, in terms of objections, there's the concern about post-abortive women. And some people will say, uh, is it not hurtful to post-abortive women to see these images? And indeed, the images may trigger pain in a post-abortive woman, but the image of abortion is a trigger, not the ultimate trauma. Case in point, this piano, while it's something I like to look at because I like to play piano, uh, this image was very much a trigger for a woman who had had an abortion, because after her abortion, she went home to have a nap and her boyfriend went downstairs to play the piano. And shortly after that, she sold her piano. Her family was confused. You're such a good piano player. How could you sell the piano? And she refused to play the piano. And they couldn't understand it. And then she went to post-abortion counseling. And it came out that she associated the piano and its music with the abortion that she had had the day that her boyfriend played the piano. And the piano became a trigger to her trauma. And when people are triggered, we don't get rid of triggers. We seize it as a ministering opportunity to get to the root of the problem and help them have a healthy response. So in the same way as someone encounters a graphic image and they are triggered, we don't push the pictures away. We say, what is this hitting? What has gone on? And let's help you. I was once standing with our team with these signs and a woman came up and as she looked at the images and started talking to me, I asked her what she thought about abortion and her eyes filled up with tears. So then I said, do you know anyone who's had an abortion? And she said, yes. And I said, well, I know people too. And then she turned and started to walk away. And so I kind of ran towards her in order to give her a help card for her friends. But I was thinking this is, is more for her. And so I said, look, I want to give you this card for your friends in case they ever need someone to talk to. And then at this point, the tears spilled over her cheeks. And so I very gently said, did you have one? And then she said, yes. And I said, may I hug you? And she said, yes. And then I said, I'm sorry for your loss. And she responded, nobody told me it looked like that. She made the choice she did because nobody told her it looked like that. And so her sin of commission becomes our sin of omission if we refuse to bring forward the evidence. As I have to wrap up, what I'd like to do is leave you with a video we've put together about a campaign called End the Killing, where we want to end abortion in our lifetime. It's just a two-minute clip. And this will address the third point I mentioned. What does this look like in your community if you see the need for images what will that look like? What can we actually do? And I'm going to wrap it up with this video.